my mom and I, you know, my mom was president of a labor union and uh, the Screen Actors Guild, like Ronald Reagan before her, and um, he was still a Democrat then. But the, uh, we did lots of different things. We went and advocated on Capitol Hill. We went and lobbied for, uh, there was an education uh, reform initiative, as I recall, and there was a National Institute of Health and National Institute of the Arts that we, uh, uh, funding that we wanted to advocate for. Anyhow, we got up to, we were work, doing the whole spiel. We met with President Bush and his, President Bush's team, and then we went up to Hill and did the Congress. By the time we got to the Senate, our group of like 18 or 20 actors, we were feeling pretty, you know, pretty self-important, uh, you know. We really felt we understood the issues that we were there to uh, talk about, and we felt like, you know, we just had to take our battering ram and, and get these darn legislators to understand what was right in the world. And we sat down in one of the rooms, and Joe Biden came in and sat down, and he, he heard what we had to say, and then he put on a clinic about the mechanics of the Senate and how Congress works and how legislation works. And he started saying things to us about, you know, well, you gotta talk to this person and this is how this works and you gotta make sure, and the timing of this and when it comes out of that committee and you gotta do this. And by the, you know, we were all just taking furious notes listening to Senator Biden uh, talk. It was just a, an incredible um, lesson in government. And then Hillary came in and she started, uh, well, first started listening and I think five or six of us got up and said our piece about why we were there and gave our own little, pro I didn't get to talk actually, I was one of the junior representatives, but, uh, but people shared what their personal story was and then they talked about this, these, you know, what we were advocating for and she listened to it and then she kind of, she said, okay, she said, I understand. And she started to feed back to us what we had just explained to her, only she did it in a way way more sophisticated and way more comprehensive manner. She understood our issue way more than we understood our issue. And she started going through chapter and verse with how, you know, this is the history of that issue and this is where it came to. And in the last two cycles, this is the legislation was proposed. This is who blocked it. This is why it stopped. This is what got through. This is what we're proud of. This is what we think we can get done in the next time. That's the goal we want. And she was just going on and on and on and on. And her She's just such a determined worker. Her investment in having studied the issues and having been, you know, consistent with meeting people and on the committee hearings and, you know, she, she cared about it. She cared about the issue or the issues. And we walked out of that room, this is the story, right? And we walked out of that room realizing that we were neophytes, that we really, really, really hadn't done anywhere near the kind of homework we should have done and that if we wanted to be effective, we should actually try and learn from our representatives who were in the trenches trying to get stuff done, rather than try to teach them in our you know, downtime what we had learned. So, you know, constituent services are really important and, and hearing the concerns of citizens are important, but I, it just, it just reinforced. And then the other thing was, we had a couple of Republicans came in. Chris, I can't remember the Republicans' names. I like the Democrats. But they came in and they were also very thoughtful, had really good comments. And what was clear, and this is something I didn't say before that I've really realized was, not only were they willing to work with Hillary, but in a sense they counted on her because she knew more about stuff than they did. So they relied on her to be helpful. And they knew where they wanted to kind of draw the line for themselves with the way they felt about stuff and their constituents, but there was a professional courtesy and a professional respect that is impossible to imagine if all you watch is the news media mm -hmm. and all you listen to is the, the, the haters, yeah. you know? But that's the truth. So when I look at the agenda, when I look at the worldview that's kind of put out there, um, everything from education, mental health, uh, you know, reforms that she's talking about, criminal justice, all the things that she talks about in the book, you just sort of think, man, she's going to make compromises sometimes that are painful to me, but she's also going to get the other side to make, and they're going to get stuff done. I really, really, really in my heart of hearts believe that even if we get a divided government, which we do not want, mm -hmm. we would love to give her, you know, a real, you know, put the wind at her back and let her make some big decisions for us, you know, with the Supreme Court and with other stuff. But I really believe that what matters to her may not be the most soaring oratory you've ever heard. She may not bring, you know, 100,000 people to their feet this afternoon, 
but however many thousand show up are gonna walk away smarter and more interested in being helpful. And I, so I, I, you know, you, we're all, this is the choir, but that's how I feel about stuff. Yeah.